And now, the Deep Homie Guide to the 21st Century. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to the Deep Homie Guide podcast. Today is May, what is it? What's the date, Paul? 18th? May 18th, 2021. And the future's on its way. Nailed it. May 18th, yeah. <laughs> what's up, podcast Ville? Hello. Welcome from Syracuse. I'm here with my two friends, Paul and Mike. What's going on? Oh, no, yeah. oh, just uh, we. I had some windows installed today, and uh, I'm here and looking forward to the world. Yes, we're here and we're queer, baby. What's going? <laughs> what's going on, Mike? How are you, brother? I'm chilling, man. I'm grateful to be here. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, this is nice. The volume went up. This is nice. Now I'm looking at the thing. I'm looking at the. It's, it's interesting how the levels. Oh, this. Yeah, I like how yeah. it jumps up. It's pretty. There's cool. a little oh, dance yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike Terry, we got a local comedian with 10 years experience and like, <laughs> fucking awesome go- dude. Mm-hmm. Mike Terry has also performed throughout upstate New York, including places like the Syracuse Funny Bone and the Broadway Comedy Club in New York City. Check him out on Instagram, at Mike Terry 7. So, so, all right, so Mike, you've been doing stand up in and around Syracuse, New York for quite a while, is that right? Yeah. First time I did it was, was it freaking 2008? Wow. That's great. No, no, no. In 2007. You like I've Dave Chappelle nine. doing it in high school, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, so we had, <clears throat> did basketball, didn't work. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad too. Uh, what is it? Boxing. We're not going to discuss it. Um, wrestling. Basically, I tried stuff. All right. And it got to a point where I'm like, all right, uh, I got to do something. I have to do something. All these things didn't work. What else am I good at? And then I'm like, all right, I like making people laugh. Uh, you know, I uh, can make the friends laugh. It's cool. I'm not the class clown, but I got my little group. And then long story <laughs> short, so there was a, uh, I'm, I'm taking a long route. My bad. So there's a, a freaking teacher who was funny. He helped me get my jokes together. Okay. Decided, you okay. know, I found out there was going to have, they're going to have a, uh, a freaking uh not a school play a freaking oh like a variety show a, a talent show yeah a talent show okay so, uh, what school did you go to man uh follow and then i'm like all right so people could do anything they want and all that and then they was letting me know the categories and i was like all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna try comedy we're gonna see how it goes the thing is like you know people people attend those like i'm not saying people from out of the school but people in the school they <laughs> attend those yeah. because of who's there who's gonna you know they know their friends so it's like, uh, if you suck, you're going to hear about that jump for a year. Oh, so you had to be good. <laughs> yeah. You had to do right. Yeah, that was at least my mentality. You know, so I'm like, all right. But at the same time, you know, it's my first time doing comedy. Now, this is where I was. We, Me and the teacher, we looked up jokes online. Okay. Like, for my first set. It was like, all right, we're going to just get Like, knock-knock knock jokes, knock-knock jokes. On that level. On that, <laughs> on that level. So, uh, but long story short, so... I did it the first time. Uh, it, it, you know, it was okay for the first time. And I was like, all right, you know. Uh, when a second time, that one was a little better. I started feeling a little confident, and then the third time, I was like, all right, that's what I want to do. And and uh, like when you say like second time, third time, you mean that like uh, uh, talent shows? Years. Yeah, yeah. Talent so, shows, okay. You know, it was once. I was a gonna year. say that seems like a lot of talent shows. Yeah, it was well, like once, once a year. A year. You were debuting this. Yeah, so like what the the fourth year, right? Well, not fourth year, the third, my fourth year in high school, senior year. Yeah. Um, there was that we had school plays and stuff like that we was doing. And you didn't do any, you didn't do the drama. Like you weren't in the plays or anything like I that. Like, I like that. But you don't do. The drama. <laughs> no, no, but, uh, I meant that two ways. I meant that no, two no, ways. No, I know what you mean. Because no, um, I didn't, and I kind of wish I did. Yeah. So like the first time, my uh, my first joke was, it was a, I, I had three of them planned. I had oh, three yeah. of them planned. <laughs> so my first joke was about like a, a picnic, like a, a cookout. <laughs> I go to a cookout and I invite family and it's buck wild. And uh, I'm not going to go through it. But at the same time, did the joke, got a couple lives, got the hell off stage. Uh, second time. Oh, this is your first performance? Yeah, first You gave performance one joke, time. not many laughs, and then you got off? Yeah, because wow. I, mean, I, had, I think so I had like you did your like five minutes. I did. did I like, don't know how long. It was like three minutes, to okay. be honest. It was like okay. a three minute. It, I'm surprised wow. if it was that long, but Dude, still kudos for you to doing that. All you're by yourself on a stage. What eighth grade or something? Freaking. Uh, that was that was ninth grade. Grade. Ninth, ninth grade. grade. Ninth grade. Yeah. So ninth right. grade, tenth. No, no. Damn. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. My bad. So it was tenth grade. 
Yeah. My bad, dude. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's all good, brother. Yeah, all right. So, figure it out. Just, just, great, no, just thinking back, because, I mean, this is okay. so foreign to me. I mean, I started doing stand-up when I was, what, 26 or something, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so anyway. Oh, you did it, you know, starting like 16, so, so all right, keep yeah, doing that. Yeah, but then each year, uh, each year I got my set got better as far as, like, now I got three jokes the second time. So I did, like, three jokes. I got some laughs, and then, you know, I was feeling like, all right, that was that was okay, but I'm like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know yet. Yeah. You know, so like then that the third time that one was a lot better. People was actually looking forward to me. Well, wow. I shouldn't say it, but people was looking forward to me coming on stage, like family. I was nice, nice. And then you know, after that, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, I was like, yeah, this is so this cool. is it. That's awesome. Yeah. So ever since that time, you've basically known that this is like what you were going for for your path. Yeah. Yeah, dang, so that's that's kind of a nice life. Like, not 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 nice, but like nice that you got your little goal. And right, right. But I'm not, right. It's probably been a grind, right? Getting to all these mics and everything. Yeah, it's. Um, you love it or what? Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's you gotta. I'm able to go. To, you know, I'm able to go to these open mics. Like I'm, you know, uh, I freaking get out at 1:45. Like that. Then again, no, no, no. The people from the DMV would not see this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? So I shouldn't say that, but a lot of people get angry at the DMV, and I'm the guy that has to give them the information that makes them angry. Wait, you're the DMV? No, I'm I'm a I'm a security guard who works at the DMV. But and you got to deal with the people who are unruly. I'm the fall guy. So like, <laughs> so like when they say, "Hey, my such and such is not," you know, I'm getting uh, if they have a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. And they bring the problem, and then we go and check on it, or we go and try to find information. And they, the information they receive yeah. is not uh, like encouraging, <laughs> you know, or is not seen as a solution. Ooh. Okay. Then, okay. you know, that's when you get spring into action. Upset. Yeah. You would be shocked at how quick people say fuck you. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is an alarming rate. All right. But <sighs> off that. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's so so you're saying you got a lot of time after work. You get off work early enough. So you're saying you have a. It's possible for you to go yeah. to these mics and to these shows. I try to take advantage all over upstate of upstate New York. Yeah, I try to take advantage of that. And then I, you know, I, I like to travel. Yeah. You know, I like driving. Um, oh, because you must do. Because I know you go to the Albany mic. That's an hour forty, hour half. Yeah, that's I know you go two. to two. two. That's go to Rochester. Right. That's an hour forty. Right. You go to Binghamton. That's like an hour ten. Yeah. So it's, you know you gotta you gotta do some traveling, but it, it can be worth it though, man. You go with the the go whether it is like all right, I'm gonna say these. It's five minutes. I'm gonna I'm practice the five minutes, or whether it's, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna do three minutes and I'm gonna do two minutes of improvising, and gotcha. then, you know, just to keep 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 you know keep yourself loose, keep yourself sharp. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's true. It's true. But no, nah, man, I, I I really love this, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it's been growing on me because it, it was really for me first year or so. It's just uh, it's just hard. It's scary. Oh, yeah. Being a whatever twenty six year old man used to doing things okay, not bad, and then going on stage and bombing all the time. You know, oh, yeah. your first year of comedy, yeah. or at least mine. It was uh, it was just hard to be like want to go back every time to yeah. old days or want to go to the ice cream scan or whatever. Or just be like, I'd rather just uh, you know oh, yeah. kick back and do something. Else. But as yeah. time has gone by and I started to develop the flex those muscles and and start to get a little bit of control and start to have jokes that worked here and there and yeah. the payoff of people laughing with you is just so amazing. Yeah, I love that. I love when people yeah, yeah. share that that angle, that perception you had. That you know what I mean. Like that's what comedy is all about: is just sharing the wacky shit you've seen. Yeah, and it just makes people all come together. Yeah, man. Like that's uh, <clears throat> I don't think that's spoken about a lot. Like what? as far as like say, like wanting like the days that you don't want to go to an open mic, like those aren't necessarily spoken on. Like uh, oh, I but what I've learned is like. <laughs> You, you, I try to, what I do is I just try to, I try to, so I'm moving forward. By going to the open mic, I'm taking a step forward. Facts. So that's like, you know, that's, that's something I do to try to keep myself motivated in that regard. But it's, it's, I feel like, I don't know. I don't, I feel like I don't have that much tenure enough to be like, oh, I, give all information on comedy but i feel like that's nah, something you that's... got 10 years of experience almost no but i'm yeah right. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> for real though i mean right. i got two basically he's got three basically plus our whole lives of maybe yeah. four no, maybe got no, four no, got three. like two and a half ish i mean what do you, how do you count covid you know what i mean all right so we only, we, we have a lot less time yeah. the game two, is two, than you. Two to us yeah. to us you're you're uh you know 
we I I think you're a good, really good comic. I think you're one of the best local comics. That's for I sure. I appreciate it, man. That's it's really cool. Man. Well, no, I, I I I like to be nice, but I also like to be truthful. Like, I mean, you make crowds fucking laugh con- consistently. It's awesome. Uh, That's amazing. I'm not good at taking compliments. So I, <laughs> you want a Kleenex, man? No, no. Just give me a good solid thumbs up, and we just go. <laughs> no, we'll just move on. We'll just move on. No. Got a two buddy buddy on the show. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, no, I mean it's just cool, man. I mean I don't know. It's uh, do you, so. Do you typically just do different things? Sometimes you come up with uh, five minutes of stuff you know is going to work. Sometimes you do the whole thing improv, or is it mostly like five and two yeah, to, yeah. to previous jokes to, to improv? What is it? Right, or so new stuff, rather? Like, there's a... When you do a mic. W- generally, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll have, like, at least probably three jokes. Or not three jokes, but three three minutes. Like, all right, I'm going to have this uh, that I'm going to talk about. Sometimes it's, like, a pro- not a process. So, say if I don't have anything at two o'clock scheduled all right i got these three jokes then all right by the time i get to the open mic i need to at least know in my head at least just thinking about it throughout the day all right what do i want to talk about what do i feel like talking about today Mm. and then just uh trying to figure out what jokes i want to go with or whether i want to try something off the fly or sometimes i think the best thing to do you know is just especially if it well no i'll just say it's the best thing to do is just go up there and just freaking talk Oh, for sure. Sometimes. For yeah. sure. Too so. much scripting can, I feel like, take you away from the audience. Yeah. Like, that presence sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. Like, uh, there was one point where uh, I was, like, I would say sticking to the script. Like, say I had five minutes, and then I had everything planned every, like, almost every week. Yeah. And I was, like, just so focused on getting these jokes to work and uh, just getting my time down that it's, like, it, it took some some joy out of it. Mm. so i'm like all right so you know you also learn all right so when i go up there and improvise and then i get those laughs and i feel a little more genuinely funny but and then it's it's i don't yeah. know it's cool it's like a balance it's totally that's, a balance. that's that's from my point of view that's my experience that's what i've learned you that's know that's awesome so, wow wow man that's so exciting i mean do you, uh me and mike Mar- me and geez i can't even talk either <laughs> <laughs> me and p were uh talking just a little bit about your style recently it's like it's interesting like you have a, it's like kind of like refined a little bit like you, you, you know like mitch hedberg at all or uh what's that other motherfucker heard the name yeah um steven wright these are yeah, just yeah, yeah. those are comics from like the 80s and 90s that uh actually 90s and 80s respectively were who just like would do short jokes really short and yours are not that short you know what i mean right. they're not like that short but they would just do like setup killer punchline and just like yeah. just milk the time almost and yeah. i feel like that's i just feel like you often get the crowd to laugh with not that many words i think that's uh, i think it's interesting i think it's interesting uh, that's cool man uh, do you go for that i mean who are your influences uh i'll say my favorite growing up i have to say growing up no nah, i have to say growing up no disrespect if you ever watched this martin lawrence that favorite growing up love the show love to stand up uh freaking he's so crazy I actually you know, haven't seen that much Martin Lawrence. I've seen him in movies. Is, is he, he so he's crazy good? in movie or he, what? No, no, no. Uh, comedy uh, his special. His special. Like, have you seen his specials, Paul? Have you seen Martin Lawrence? I, I can't attest to watching a ton of Martin. I mean, I watched uh, him on uh, Martin. And was okay. he also a member of uh, In Living Color? No, no. He... Uh, no, nah, Jamie Foxx was on there. Though. Okay, so so yeah. he wasn't a part of... Uh, he wasn't a part of In Living Color. Because yeah. I, I watched a lot of... Uh, or at least a lot of reruns, I feel like, when I was you know, 11, 12... Yeah, uh, yeah. Of in loving color which was hilarious yeah, yeah. I, we we had like all five seasons <laughs> yeah and then like i don't know it was just one summer like i don't know our summer <laughs> i'm grateful like we had good summers it's like like i'll say teen years yeah uh, freaking in lemon color that's that was probably from the 2005 summer okay. or something like that or two that that's all we watched the whole freaking <laughs> set there but were two love, solid points I was going to make, and I forgot uh, them all. But something about Martin Lawrence. Here's something right. about Martin Lawrence. I loved him in Blue Streak. I thought he was really good in Big Mama's House. Wasn't that big a fan of the sequel, but you know, no, no problem. I love Big it. Mama's, cash man. Grab, big Mama's know? is great. <laughs> I love it as a cash <laughs> grab, even. I think it's just, whenever you put a, somebody in a suit, fat suit, and make them a lady, I just think it's going to be a great movie. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. Whether you're talking about that or, oh, uh, oh man, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm-hmm. Love those movies. Yeah. But there's uh, freaking Eddie Murphy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I watched yeah. Delivered. My bad. I watched Delirious. 
Delirious is yeah. crazy. You can do any of those jokes these days, man. Is, so delirious, no, 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 no. <laughs> is delirious the purple suit or the red suit? I think it's red suit. Red suit. Red, red suit. suit. Okay. Raw, raw I, is the purple I, suit. I believe I watched Delirious for the first time uh, probably last month. Oh my god, what did no, you think? What did you think? Twenty first century man. Um, yeah. uh, the first like ten minutes, I was like, <laughs> this man said a million cancelable offenses in five minutes. <laughs> cancelable. <laughs> cancelable. <laughs> like, like, right. like, and I'm not for cancel culture. I was like, Ugh. like. Right, right. Somebody better. Good thing no one's watched this apparently because yeah, yeah, yeah. woke cultures. You're like, I better, not, I better not share this on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he's real. Well, I think he's it's did, a different like time. A, uh, um, you know how people order like an apology or something like that. Like they'll put a statement out or oh, you put one out on that. Mm, yeah, I don't think he like apologized, but it was like you know that's when I was younger and stuff like that. Also, I don't know, man. Like. This, y- y'all remember what it was like in the nineties? Oh, oh yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Anybody else remember? Like, I remember like, that. That might have been <laughs> early eighties like, or, or like seventies when it was made. But yeah, the nineties yeah. was a pretty crass time. Yeah, yeah. I think it was eighties, nineties. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for real. That's what. That's what. I, I, that's going back to the meaning of what I was saying earlier. It was like uh, culture was different back then, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. culture was different. You want to be gay, man. You don't want to be gay. Right, right. You want to be. Di- you want to be weird. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be. Di- yeah, even early two thousands a little bit. You don't want to be like a. A trans person, like, I don't know. There's all many, all these different butts of jokes, you, you know, right. back then. Those things that were looked butts down of on. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they were the butts yeah. of the jokes, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't really fair. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> there's a pun there. We're close. Right, right, right. Keep working at it, guys. Right, right, right. We'll get one. Yeah. We'll get one. We'll get something, man. We're, str- we're just gonna keep striking. Nah, but freaking Eddie Murphy. Eddie's good, man. And uh, he, I watched Deliver- Delirious, and uh, it was like special features. He had like an interview. Yeah. With like another uh, thing is Byron Allen or something like that did the interview, and he was talking about uh, his first you know first time doing comedy how he got into it and he was talking about how he had to walk like a mile or maybe it was an hour or something like that to this open mic yeah and how young he was and I was like dang I'm like uh, I was what freaking I think I was 16 at the time. Oh, okay. And I'm like, all right. around with him when he started. Yeah, he was like around, I think, 14 or 15 is when he started. But uh, I'm okay. like, all right, I'm not too far off. I was like, maybe maybe I could try. I'm like, all right, look, worst thing that's going to happen when I get up there is I'm going to be embarrassed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know what? I only got high school for three more years. So, if I'm a, but you got to try something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got to at least try. Yeah. yeah. I'm scared, but <laughs> I got to at least try. I got yeah. you, man. So, but um, now yeah. So I watched that, and then that kind of got me going, got me like inspired. And I'm like, all right, if it started off with, I'm gonna try it, and then you know, second time was like, all right, that was good. But I, I wanted to see if I can do it again, and then the third time, you know, I was like, all right, this is it, man. So you kind of found your thing. You're like, you had tried basketball, you had tried a bunch of other stuff, yeah. And you're just like, you finally started getting it. Sorry, what what other thing? You said boxing, basketball, yeah. And what? Is there anything else in the list like karate or something? <laughs> It's, ballet obviously was in that. No, no, no. It was not. <laughs> there was no ballet. All I'll right. say that. We'll no. clear the record right now. No, but uh, <laughs> freaking boxing, wrestling. Uh, what was it? Basketball, wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And freaking. When uh, you say wrestling, you mean like high school wrestling? Yeah, too. high school. Not, not like like yeah, I wish yeah, yeah. that was the goal. <laughs> like that was the goal. I was like, but I'm like, no. Nah, I know that they don't have that here. Like if they had an actual wrestling ring, I would not probably be a comedian. I'd probably be. At least a manager of some sort, like at the very least, at the very least. That's I what still I can't say. believe from our podcast that we learned that Paul Leo Ellinger is trained to, trained to be a professional wrestler. He's trained, right yeah, now. he's currently I'm, training I'm in know. Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's where I'm moving. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no but that's dope, though, man. Hell yeah, yeah, that's dope. I know he was, you know, he, he liked wrestling too, like you know, so I'm like, that's that's pretty cool. That's 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 uh. I'm gonna say I, this. I kinda wanna do, do I wanna do something like that, like uh, MMA or something. I a do larger a larger percentage of people that we know, friends of ours, are into WWE than I, I, I ever expected. Yeah. Me too. Like yeah. I didn't expect it. I had no idea Zach, how to get Paul, into it. Him. You know, growing into it. Cream. Oh, it's racist. It it does. <laughs> I Wait. feel like that's the one thing we say every so, every episode. It's the only thing I remember. Hang on, let's do Nah, what were we gonna say? You had a hit, you had a hit? Oh. No, nah, I, I, I missed punch, the I mean, moment. I was, I was uh, cool. No, yeah, uh, cool. uh, has coming past. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, I feel you. It's, it's all, I'm like, damn, I missed it. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. I mean, I guess I can relate a little. Me and me and P both, we both were, uh, when we were younger, we were both more mu- musicians, if anything. Oh, Neither yeah. of us did stand-up. We both did live musical stuff. and uh, like We were both in bands. 
Okay. So I guess, uh, you know, I had a lot of that stuff, like that fear, conquering things going on stage and right. wanting to do it again and all that stuff. But I guess it just took me a while to want to get into comedy. But it's cool you had the comedy bug early because it's a great and rewarding activity for sure. Yeah, man. I love it. Yeah, man. Especially just when you're able to, when you start seeing progress. Yeah. And that's what I love. Like, you know, so I try to create little, little objectives. I mean, you know, just like, all right, I want to hit two mics this week. Yeah, sure. And stuff like that. And uh just just you know try to keep myself uh encouraged like like motive like keep a goal i'm like goal oriented yeah I, so like i i need to have some kind of goal ahead of me as far yeah. as that keeps me like you know so like uh, i'm gonna try to go to uh what Cortland, uh paul Cazal- oh the Cazal- thursday Cortland. is that yeah. when's that coming up i think it might be it might be this week oh probably. if it's this week that's perfect because we don't so have the other, we don't Thursday. have the other Mike and Manly asked this week. Oh my gosh, Mike, will you have your car back? You want to drive us? <laughs> I will drive both of you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have freaking, uh, I mean, I could drive us two guys. Have, I have a license. Exactly. <laughs> we're exactly thinking about going. So oh, we, we can make it a party, bro. Yeah, we get the crew going. The Q's crew. Yeah. I'm gonna go there soon. I want to go there. I also definitely want to make it down to Endicott for P- Big Peter's Mike. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I've never made it to Endicott. Would, uh, yeah, we should make it soon. Man. Yeah, because like, we gotta, we gotta, you know, put some. Is that rep- a Monday night, Mike, right now. I believe so. We, yeah. we gotta put some reps in for our show coming up on the twelfth. Oh, June no 12th. doubt, no doubt. Um, Let me see if we posted about it. Oh, there that's it is, right? That's a, that's I recognize that one. What was, yeah, that uh, was for May six? So it's, dang. it's past. Dang it. Maybe, maybe right, we'll stay in contact about it. Tell us yeah. about how how was the Broadway Comedy Club? Yeah, that was so. That was like. Uh, oh, was that a show or a mic? That was. Uh, that was no, it was it was like a show, like a competition. Awesome! Oh, I think I seen, I think I saw that. I think that was like only a, a year or two ago, right? Like it was yeah, like, it was yeah, not so too long they, ago. They had uh, back when things were still open up. I think I've done it about like three times now. Yes, yeah, so, I think about three times. Did it once. Me and Jackson went down the first time. At least my first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember that was it was kind of funny because like so I went up there like all right, you know, just stay calm. You know, I mean, yes, it's the city, but this is a competition. You know, just just stay calm, don't overthink nothing. Went up there, did my set to the best of my ability at that day. And uh, when I got off stage, and I saw it, like, like they it was like it was like I got some laughs. All right, but I felt like I ran against a brick wall a little bit. <laughs> and I was just remember sitting there, and somebody else is on stage who's from New York, and you know, had people come, they getting laughs and everything, and I'm like. Maybe I'm just Syracuse funny. I was like, maybe it's different down here. And then, you know, <laughs> second time I went, you know, uh, I don't know. It was, you know, it was I same competition it, or a different different year or something. I think, yeah, same kind of competition, but I did better. And I did like I was like, all right, all right, you know, that was how that was good, you know. So, so keep keep building from there and stuff like that. So. I think the second time I went, there was a competition, and it was like the first round or something like that, or like the you know. But the thing lasted for like a year, so it was like one round, and everybody was going to the finals. That's yeah. what you know. What I was so so, uh, yeah, basically. So it was like once a month they had the show, mm-hmm. and uh, you know people kept you know I think it was about twenty people, and then eventually I think it was like another twenty in the finals, stuff like that. But. But the the finals is in a different room. The first one was downstairs, and then the second one was in the like the main stage. So that was, but it was cool. It was like a little tighter, a little smaller, but it was it was a dope it was a dope show. Then I found out I could have used uh, just because I was like, all right, these it's a competition I've been in, so I got to use different jokes. And then oh, I found out different audience, right? Oh, I could have used. Just the classics. I could. <laughs> uh, okay. Is that typical? Is that typical? Where round and round, you can, you can still like, let's say it's a five minute set or whatever. You 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 can do the same five, uh, yeah. each round or no? Well, no, no. I, I, well, I found out that day, yeah, because I, the judges were different. Okay. So I thought, mm-hmm. all right, the judges are gonna be the same. Was there a live audience? Yeah, yeah, live audience. Um, that was like, two, that was twenty. It feels like it was twenty twenty, but it was twenty nineteen. It feels like 2020 didn't even happen. A little bit. It yeah. feels like it was like a chapter in the book that was just ripped out. It's just right, crazy. Right. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like torn pages. Yeah. Torn pages in your textbook. 
Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. So man. unless a competition explicitly says round around, you need to do a brand new five or whatever, it's it's kind of understood that you can do you can choose to do the same five. I'll say I'll stay with that one because I feel like I don't know if that's going to be every competition if they're going to like some will have the same judges or some will have different. But that was the only reason I was given because it was like different judges and stuff like that. But, oh, OK. Uh, but I know what you mean, though. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it was like, I guess it's like an unspoken type thing. But yeah. So I got a question. So if tomorrow it could go for both of you, but specifically first Mike. Tomorrow, if you won the lottery, somebody had bought you a ticket tonight, you get home, so grandma gave you a t- somebody gave you a ticket, and right. next morning they call the lottery, and you, you won $20 million, and you're set for life. You're set for life! Would, right. you, uh, would you keep doing comedy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. That's, that's... You wouldn't just get an island and just eat a bunch of pizzas and go to sleep? No, nah, I mean, I would do that too, but I, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I can't stop doing comedy. If anything, that's going to help fund it. <laughs> okay, so you just get the comedy van together. I'll freaking get a freaking uh, truck or or something <laughs> that moves fast and has a lot of like room. an RV. Oh, maybe yeah. like a, just a bus, a bus, a tour bus. I, I like the I like the RV. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Are you gonna have you a know? driver? Are you gonna have somebody driving it, whipping it for you? Probably my brother. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll have to pay him if I bring it. So yeah, but you got twenty no, million. So. I'll pay him in food. But um, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. So <laughs> I'll do the freaking, same thing. I'd be like my brother. I'd be like, "Mom, get over here, brother. Right. Gonna, what are you getting paid right now? I'll give you double." <laughs> I get a freaking RV and I would go around the country, man, and just freaking okay. hit every open mic. Whatever show I could possibly wow. get on, and yeah, try and just become the tra- the traveling comedian, the traveling million millionaire tra- comedian. Yeah, you just freaking spread the word, just spread, you know. That'd be a and thing. You just, then you know, I, I I like to think if you do that, then all right. By the time I come back, and you know, when I'm doing that, I'm you know letting people know what my Instagram is and stuff like that, and then trying to you know get more you know more uh, i'm trying not to say certain words like notoriety and all that but you know you get we're trying, to, we're people, trying to get you some clout man we'll more, get some clout people, for you more people get to know you and stuff I, like that so it makes sense time, man you got that's what it is unfortunately it's it, if you want to be a, a successful entertainer or a comic you are self-promoting what else right. are you selling you're selling yourself yeah. uh, it's, it, it is awkward at times i feel that energy because it's just like Right, right, right. I don't want to. Like, like you're whoring yourself. Like. Yeah, I feel like in the streets. Right, right. It's just right. awkward. Would you do it? Would you do it if you won? If you had full, your family was set, good for life, but but everything's fine. Uh, then I think I would just do more comedy. Yeah, I don't think that there's an option at some point. That's it feels cool. like uh, you miss some weeks or whatever. You feel uh, like you got an itch, man. Like. Yeah. You haven't gotten that mm, addiction. Got like it feels... Two comic, comedy addicts on my hands. No, right, right. <laughs> right like right. You, like I feel more irritable if I'm not getting on stage regularly. Yeah. Sounds like you've been smoking comedy out of a light bulb, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three bakes in it. Uh, it's just straight to the vein. Yeah. But uh, wow, man. Um, do you get bombs ever? Oh, sorry. Do you get do you get do you get, do you bomb ever? And do you get nerves uh, still a yeah, lot? I mean, or not a lot. I I think the worst. Uh, I don't like saying it. I think the worst that I've done is like um, the worst. Like I've had bad sets. I think okay. So this one, I like <laughs> this one. So. I did a set, and I think it was like, so uh, this worst time I did some jokes that were like, uh, damn, cancer culture. I'm thinking of that now. I'm like, all right, don't, <laughs> maybe not that one. All right. Well, but Long story short, did a set. It didn't go well. <laughs> I got like a couple chuckles, right? right? And then at the end of, well, I freaking was doing something with the mic. Like a demonstration, and then I ended up knocking over the mic stand and hit this woman on her back. Oh, no, and then I was like, I was in defeat. I'm just grabbing it, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's, I, I was trying to continue the joke. I said like the punchline, and then she repeated it, like like with the attitude of, Ooh. yeah, better had said sorry. And then I was like, all right, <laughs> no, that's my time. You guys can come and grab it, and. That was it. I was like, yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Uh, you know. All right. It sounds like Mike Terry's not big into confrontation. You're not having that during no- uh, during that point. No. I mean, I don't go out seeking it, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I don't. I'm, a lot I'm, I'm, I'm averse to it myself, and I think that's you got to have. You got to be ready to duel sometimes, though, as a, as a comedian, yeah. I guess. I mean, like not like not literally with your <laughs> right, 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 like Dukes, but you know, but like like with this this job, it's uh, it's it's definitely. I'm not as I'm not as uh. You deal with it more, so okay. you get more used to it. You gotta, gra- you gotta grab on fools sometimes and pull them out. 
I will not say that on this podcast. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I mean, it's your job to grab, to, to snag a fool podcast. and yank him out of the operation. I mean, we, we've heard stories from you that you right. almost, almost threw cuffs, almost threw fists at some I, point. I, I yeah, will, again, not not going to I will not brass knuckles, so right? I know. We'll talk that. about yeah. that today. We'll not. You got a, you got you got some notoriety in this town, man. <laughs> Work this out. <laughs> People know about the great and fearsome Mike Terry right, no. down at the DMV on the west side. No, but damn, I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shit, but, we gotta take the part out. No, no, it's oh no, uh, it's, uh, it's about, that's cool, man. I like that. Thirty-seven dream. minutes in, I like that. I like that no, dream of getting on the road and just doing comedy. I'm, I might do that soon. I might uh, just take a little road trip soon. And just go so around fun. and hit some ice. Now things are opening up. This is a uh, shot girl summer this year. This year, twenty twenty one. Everything's opening summer. up. Right, 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 right. Uh, no, shot girl summer is oh, what Zach? Zach informs me. Zach's up on things. What oh, is this shot like, girl vaccine, summer? Vaccine, okay, guys, we got you. Oh, right, okay. right, right. but uh, yeah, no. But anyway, people are gonna be out and about. Oh my goodness, gentlemen! This morning, went to uh, a coffee shop while I was writing some jokes and whatnot, and put together some notes for this pod. And the barista informed me that tomorrow, as long as I'm vaccinated, I'm gonna wear a mask. And they're not gonna be asking anybody whether or not they're vaccinated. So basically, you don't have to wear a mask in New York State in a lot of places starting tomorrow. Things are changing fast. Here's the interesting part. Uh, off the record. That's interesting that you're a security guard, though. It's not the same thing as a cop, but it obviously is a little bit similar in some ways. You have to be there to enforce the line at some point, sometimes. To some degree. Like, there's, there's, uh, it makes me wonder if you ever wanted to be a police officer, especially in this nah, day and age. Uh, nah, there's, you know, my bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. no. Just this day and age, it's just like, you know, all the tensions with the police and stuff. I think the police are at an all time low for popularity. So I wasn't right. sure if you were like, yeah. if you ever wanted to go into that kind of field or not, just nah. with the whole security being similar a little. No, nah, this was this was just a job. This just a job. job. <laughs> just a job. Yeah. No, All no, right. there's a. Uh, I used you don't to work have a dream at a library. beyond that to, to no, go to the next level. No, no. Okay. Oh, okay. You don't want to wear the blue outfit. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so there was. Uh, I used to work at a library, um, Monday Branch Library. I'm sure I can say that. And uh, there's what, bran- what branch you say? Uh, Monday Branch, Monday Branch Library. Where's that one at? Monday. Son get us. I don't, I guess I don't it's know. like right before that little hill. I consider myself a library connoisseur. I haven't, oh, been, really? <laughs> I haven't been to that one. I've oh, been to man. most of the Onondaga public libraries. Wow. You know, not like yeah. all the time, especially during COVID, because during COVID it's now weird. You got to like sign up mm. an hour for an hour t- block to go to the library. So oh, thank goodness the COVID's do. almost over. I really hope this, I can just walk into a library again and be a free yeah. person. That's my definition of freedom, guys. Do you would think your uh, American dream is just to be able to walk into the library again? <laughs> Bro, it's, it's walk epic. Up traffic. You know what's epic? If you ever go to New York City, they got some good libraries there. They got some yeah. big old library. All right, anyway. they got some other things besides no, libraries, man. <laughs> yeah, right next to the strip club, they got a dang library. Right, right. Um, we had a nice library, man. Uh, yeah, you like, had one. When I remember it, like oh, I remember uh, at Fowler or at this place or this at uh, Monday Branch. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah. like uh, they renovated one year, but even before then, it was pretty nice and stuff like that. So, thing is, I would work with kids. So like you know I'm I'm over there that's where I'm working I'll sell books but when the kids come in you know that's when I go over I monitor or something like that and uh you know like I'll help them get on the computer sign them in stuff like that they would have events on the weekends sometimes uh-huh. Uh-huh. kids are going watch movies stuff like that yeah, so yeah, yeah. but dealing with the kids was kind of like in hindsight that was that was pre security guard so it was kind of yeah. like. Like training to a degree. Like, yeah. all right, you start with kids here, and then okay, looking over my life, you know, went into being a security guard, and it's like, all right, that was like the next step. Yeah, but okay, so you just like we're working on. Yeah, I had a similar experience because I used to te- when I taught middle school for a little while. I worked at a uh, Blodgett. I taught okay. home and careers at Blodgett for a year, and then I taught oh. uh, science at Danforth, seventh grade science. Okay. Damn for three years. So sometimes I had to be a security guard too for these little kids, man. Oh Some yeah. Some were little little men too, but like one one little dude Enrique who tried to, was like beating me up one time. He literally was like so upset. Jeez. He was swinging at me. Oh. And wow. I had to like do something to, you know, right. to, to take control of the situation without hurting him. It was weird. Yeah, so I, I feel this, you know. So you get used to handling people who are right, right, like right. out of line. Yeah. And I guess I just got you to the security guard level. But it's is interesting, like um, uh. Like some of the kids, like they'll remember me and stuff like that. Like nice. <clears throat> it's that you know my new job, or whether it's like out and about or something like that. Like you know, and whether our interactions were always positive or they were sometimes negative, or you know, because I you know, 
I, I would just freaking talk to him. Like, you know, like, stop doing that. You know, like, you, you, uh, I, you know, you just kept it real or something like That's that. That's a comedian's so, gift is to be able to keep it real. No matter how awkward it is, just be like, just be like, stop. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> you, you don't need to do this. I was the same way as a teacher. I was like, you're not going to act this way. Like, just yeah. right. pull it together, bro. Like, yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Like, you don't need to be, you could be on their level with them. Like, I know, whatever, but. Oh. Yeah. But even if it's like a kid who gave me a lot of trouble or something like that, oh, or they still we remember had to kick him out and stuff like that, like, they'll see me now and they'll be like, uh, you from the, you know what I mean? You Mr. Mike, right? Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. you know, it, it's cool. It's, yeah. it's cool. It's like, all right, I feel like, and I, I would, might not have been a big difference, but maybe it was a little bit of positivity in their life, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, yeah. man. That's what it's all about, man, being a positive role model for these kids because a lot of them don't have a role model. Yeah, it's nice to have good interaction with these kids. Honestly, yeah, right. a lot of them really were are, were lonely and stuff like that. Because as a teacher, I found that out. You know, I would, not like lonely. That's weird. But I mean, like yeah. they didn't have like a lot of them don't have like good parental structure at home, like parents or people or family that love them too much or whatever. Because right. I just like I could because I would talk to the kids and like learn about all that stuff and or I would try to call if there was a problem. Like they were getting terrible grades, or whatever, and never showing up, whatever. Like try yeah. to call them, you know over to. Enrique's house or whatever, and you know, a lot of times, if Enrique was acting up at school, you find out that nobody's picking up the phone. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Nobody's picking up, or if they are picking up, they don't. They sound like they're like half cracked out or whatever, or like half Xanaxed oh, out yeah. or something like. You know what I mean? Like, or, yeah, you got a different point, uh, perspective. I mean, not perspective, but you yeah. got a different. Yeah. You know I mean, experience with it. Yeah, know? for sure, <laughs> for sure. That's what I mean by being a good Roman. I don't mean like being a oh, just like right, right, right. You know, just being a decent person. Yeah, I remember uh, sometimes I, I'd, I'd have to call parents, you know, for for uh, different like roles at church, youth pastor and whatnot. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But like, I remember one particular, <laughs> what in particular? I'm not gonna name names or whatever. But every time I had to call this this girl's like parents. It'd be either like her aunt or mom. And every time, it'd be like, "Yeah," that would be the way they'd start. That's oh. the that wouldn't they wouldn't be hello. Oh, how are I you? had a couple it of those too. Yeah, man. I had a couple right, of those. It was a strong. It was a strong. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Right, and yeah. Then, or like, and you were know, like intimidated as a caller. You're like, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, "Hello." Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, yeah. what? And it's, I was like, "That's that's got to be fun to grow up with." Yeah, yeah. Like, this is I, Pastor I'm not Paul. Kidding. I'm not talking Pastor. about one one time. I'm talking about like four times. All of them started that way. Did their tone change once they realized it was Pastor P? No, no, not at all. Yeah, like, yeah so uh, that's yeah. disrespectful. Of course she did. That's disrespectful. Like that. Of course she did. Right. Yeah. All right. Bye. To call her up again. Right. What? She pulls up to the pulls up to pick her up from some event. Get in the car. Like that was. Yeah. It was like she just got here. You didn't even say like, hey. Right, right, right. Insert name here. Like right. we right, just right. arrived. It was just like what. Is hey, going man. down. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. But, uh, anyway, I'm hey, a better man, parent I saw that. than that. I had a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Let's judge them. Yeah. You know? That's good. Let's judge I'm proud them. of you. It's awesome. Thanks so much. You guys. <clears throat> you guys. Um, do you? Oh, go ahead. Do you? That's the question the woman would ask. What, do you, are you? Do you want to have kids one day? Like, are That's you a a? You know, I'm not sure about that, man. Thanks for like, asking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to phrase that. I uh, uh, that's an interesting question. I uh, I do actually, but I don't. I got this like thing where I just I'm pushing it back as far as possible to where like maybe I have more stability. Okay, that's like my ideal. It's like uh, maybe had you know whether it's comedy or something else, you know, just like actually have some steady income and some steady savings and some right. stuff like that. So that when the kids are popped out, it's like not like crazy. It's just like, it's chill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's my exactly. desire. Yeah. So I do want to have kids, but I'm not really ready to, to grow roots and provide like that personally. How about you? I I do. The number has went down. Oh really? You uh, used to want to have, how many, you want to have originally. a Brady bunch over there? Like originally, like, you know, young, stupid, you know, like I was like, yeah, I want to have 10. Dang, Ooh, bro. That's what? before I, that's before I started I, even working at the library, though. <laughs> Once I started working Once with said, kids, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, uh, five, maybe. Uh, maybe. Well, and that's, five a soft, still. that's a soft five. That's, that's a strong three. <laughs> There's not a lot of room for independent, Mike, when you've got five children. Well, I had I mean, my whole thing about pushing it off personally. Are you trying to push it off at all? Are you, are you ready to go once no, you find the light, uh, right I'm, lady? I am. I am. I need to know at, at the least is this person going to take care of the kid? Like yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. the base level. Gosh, uh, but, so you haven't found her yet? No. Uh, no, no. <laughs> so, no. Nah, like I want to make sure I, I, I had the right woman. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like I I don't want to have to have a divorce and all that. I don't, if I be trying to be so sure, yeah. to be honest, you know, but like, you know, I know you got to take chances and all that, but to answer your question, no, I, w- I would like to 
make sure I had the right woman before that. But okay. at this point, that sounds right. I'm thinking one. <laughs> it went from ten to one. <laughs> well, that doesn't even make any logical right. sense. I, I right. mean, I hear you though. I feel you. It, though. It, now it's a soft three. It's not it's no a longer three. a soft five. It's okay. a soft three. You come from a bigger <laughs> family, right? Or no? How many yeah. people in your family? So it's uh, it's about five of us. Three brothers. No. Oh wow. Four. It's four. So boys. five siblings. Yeah, four boys, one girl. Nice. Then of course, you know, mom and dad and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. big family. Uh I think it's good, man. I think I had a better time. I had a brother and a sister. I think okay. I had, and I had a decent amount of extended family cousins and stuff like that. All that stuff was right. great, you know. Running around as a kid uh, from age whatever, four to freaking sixteen or whatever. You know, it's just a good right. time. Golden years of like family shit. And I think right, that right. it'd be tough to be a, a only child, I think. I don't yeah. know. I think it might kinda of be tough. Yeah. I, Cause then you'd be just demanding mom and dad's attention all the time instead of just being like, Go play with your brother and sister, you know, right. all that stuff. One of, my, one of my friends did say uh, when we only had one, he was like, are you going to have another kid? And right. I was like, I don't know. you know. And he was like, Distraction. only children are the worst kind of people. I was like, holy crap. He must hate some only children. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Those are probably the people who roll around in convertibles with two seats <laughs> and freaking uh, take away the other one. Yeah. I feel like those people are selfish, to be honest. I've always felt that, never said it. Wait, no, somebody with a sports oh, car? You heard it here first. I'm <laughs> no <laughs> Here on the Deep Homie Guide with fucking Karoo McZame. <laughs> <laughs> P. Woods and <laughs> Meek Deer. <laughs> oh, man. Cool, man. That's uh, that's what's up. Uh, P., are you going to... I mean, you're the only man at this table who's actually bared fruit, so... Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> how many more? Oh, <laughs> no, none. No more. Two. Wow, Two is it. it. Wow. Too, as far as you know. As far as you Unless know. I become like crazy wealthy. So you get a call one night from the lady down I, in Argentina, I, I, right? I don't think so. No. Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> honestly. Mm-hmm. I've only I've, I'm sorry, Aileen. I keep looking at the camera <laughs> in default. Like when I have nowhere else to look, I'm like, all right, this is not gonna be. Yeah, because you're trying to long. avoid my eyes and his and the old one. <laughs> <laughs> <So, laughs> I'm gonna start like, looking at the light. If Hello, that's how are you? Co- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. No, no, man. I don't, I don't think so. You know, a, th- a third one would be just a lot. It'd just be like outnumbered. I just couldn't do it. I, just, yeah. uh, I think I'm too selfish of a person, to be honest. Whoa. With you. I mean, whatever. Yeah, I mean, you got a happy little family. I mean, as far as I can tell. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. Whatever. Yeah. Sound like they're like every single day, Dad, Dad, we want another brother or sister. Like they're just crying <laughs> and like yeah, all day long. Could you imagine that? It would be so weird. There was, yeah. I mean, there was a time that Ari wanted it, but yeah. yeah. But yeah. she got him. She got, yeah, she got one, you know? Maybe they'll get a dog someday. Who knows? Smart move. Yeah. Maybe. Smart move. You mm-hmm. can just replace the dog. You can replace the dog. You can replace the dog. You just get one that looks like it. All right, Michael you know, Vick. What the guy? <laughs> you have one in the freaking shelter, like in the back. And then you like, you were like. You can replace uh, a dog. Right, right. Well, how did sometimes. that just go? I mean, you're like, well, if you own a dog, obviously you're going to accidentally kill it. You're going right. to replace a dog, though. <laughs> right. I get you. You need a dog that looks like your Bro, dog. It's I'll like, you it's dog. like right. the first episode of The Simpsons when they get that dog, and then the dog just does not play another role in the, in the, in the series right, right. for, for a Sanchez while. Sanchez like yeah. Like 20 or 40 like, well, episodes, if, you barely see this dog. What if you can plan it to where the kids know about it, but, you know, you're you're. Above, like you, 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 you planned this out. You planned this out. What if you have it like, all right, I got you this dog, right? Okay. And now there's this dog in the garage. Okay. All right. So, uh, and they look alike. And they look a lot alike. This is Tony one. This is Tony one point five. Okay. We haven't named him yet, but he's there. And don't <laughs> ask me no questions about it. All right. And now you live with this dog five years. He's still being taken care of. Car hits him. Nobody freaking planned it. So Cherry 1.5 is like a, cr- a clone. And Basically. why is he named it for you? Damn it. I didn't say that, didn't I? I said Cherry 1.5. That was. Well, yeah, I still like the idea. But... You got to have a backup sometimes, man. All right. Always got to have a backup plan. bring him in. He already looks just like him. That helps him. Have you balloon. lost a lot of dogs in your life? I've, I've not owned a dog. Oh, really? I've, I've not. They, they, I said, right. Sometimes they don't die tragically. They don't? <laughs> sometimes oh. they don't. Yeah, sometimes oh, okay. they live to a ripe old age. Sometimes. That's pretty cool, man. But, uh, I don't Coming know, I guess... a man who oh. never owned animals. Mm. <laughs> never. never? No, no, I've had a, I've had a cat, but I've liked that. Do you like cats or no? I, I will no longer speak on that subject. No, what no, no. the world is going on? <laughs> nothing is, nothing, everything is sacred in Mike Terry's world. Everything. <laughs> oh, the cats, even. No, we can't no, talk I about can't, them. We can't uh, no longer allow. Don't talk about Mr. Squeakers like no that. No longer allow no, right, right. within 50 feet of a cat. And, uh, no, no. 
actually, uh, I actually have an attitude towards and Pat's uh, similar to my attitude towards this whole when I would have a family, which is that uh, I am just not ready to settle down like that. I would love to have. I love cats personally, so right, I, right. I would have a little rascal right here, just be petting them, just like uh, Don Corleone, Don Corleone in the beginning of The Godfather. This whole right, podcast, okay. but unfortunately. Last time I had a cat, I ran off and across the country, and I got him a sitter, and the sitter didn't know how to take care of him, and the, the cat was going crazy, shit in shoes and all that stuff, and, the, really? and I had to eventually give him away to somebody else who did love him, but then he died of COVID a year later, so uh, rest in peace, man. Oh, yeah. Rest in all peace, right, Mr. Squeaks. Yeah, so actually, in my world, this actually is a sacred subject. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, Mr. Squeaks is cool, but if, man, if, I, I, can't, I, can't have a, I can't have a cat. All if I have you ever got mega like, lich, do you think there's a chance you would, you would ever buy like a, like a big cat? Oh, like one of them, uh, like a tiger what's, or something. What's the biggest cat called? Um, the the main coon. Uh, I don't know don't why. Know it's, about those I don't know why it's called that, 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 but that's what it's called. It's the, the biggest cat. Is the main coon? Really? It, I don't know. It made me that. say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, Mike, if you're leaving, I'll leave with you. <laughs> we'll storm I, out together. I swear, <laughs> man, I don't know how that just happened. <laughs> Set me up for failure, brother. No, like I was thinking, like you know, a liger or a tiger or a lion. Oh, so that's or, even bigger than oh, a main coon. Because uh, uh, no, oh, you mean like a house cat? No, I'm a big cat. Yeah. Oh, like just like some, Would you ever own some weird things? like coked out rock star type shit? Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, like having like, a, yeah, I got like a cage, like Siberian. leopard. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no. White tiger. I, I mean, that'd be cool, but no. I'd probably no? just keep a big, a regular dope ass cat. I'd probably find like a fire ass cat that just okay. was like, uh, maybe one of those hypoallergenic cats that doesn't really shed. Whoa, but hairless? Still real, not necessarily hairless. No, there's mm. a couple cats that just don't shed much, just like dogs as well. Um, but uh, I don't know, man. I, I, but if I was super rich, yeah, I would have like a special cat caretaker. Gotcha. We would just make sure the cat was like fully just like got massages each day and all that other stuff that I can't do when I'm on the road trying to make a living as a comic or whatever it is. Because that's obviously all of our dreams. Obviously all of us want to be, at least you just said that you'd like to be on the road. That's for sure. Yeah, that'd be dope. In the RV or whatever. That'd be dope, man. I mean, I like, I want to be free, man. Yeah. Like, like, I don't, maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but like. I would so like, free like, from what? Yeah. Could you imagine like waking up every day and you just you just do what you love, you know? Yeah. And and that's how you make a living, and and that's that's it. I mean, of course, you got a family, <clears throat> you take care of your family and all that. Yeah. But like, imagine that being your life. Like, I mean, like I I don't like going to work. Yeah, someday. I know. But you know, I'm not saying that you know at that point. Like, you know, it's what you love, but, you know, maybe there's days where you are not enjoyable as well. But I don't I, know. That's the way it I looks you're right, right now. I think you're right, man, because uh, I personally, I'll speak on my, like, my, my pops growing up. My pops, always a hardworking man, like, totally, mm-hmm. totally a hardworking guy, my dad. But uh, he just didn't love his job at all. Like, he just, he did not like going to work each day. He made a good amount of money or whatever, selling insurance. Okay. But, you know, his dreams, his passions, like, he at one point he wanted to be a basketball player, then, like, at one point he wanted to do something else, but then, like, it just didn't work out, so, oh. like, he had, to, he had to do this job because he had this big family to, family to support, and I don't know, I don't think, I, I, I really appreciate that my, my father provided for my family, but I think there's a light amount of just, like, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't as happy, mm, and that affects right. the whole family. I'm not even trying to blame him. A lot of, fi- great, amazing dad for doing what he did, you know, yeah. so much sacrifice, you know what I mean? Give and take yeah. to both of those things, yeah. 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 But uh, like But if you could do both, if you could make the money and be like just blissful doing the thing you always wanted to do, man. Right. Man, that's that's great. That'd be dope, man. Yeah. But, I hear you. You know, like uh I don't know, one time I think I asked my dad. Like I I definitely asked my mom. Cause I know, you know, when I started hearing about uh sometimes parents will take their dreams and put it on hold so they can take care of the family. Mm-hmm. stuff like that and i was like i just made me ask like my dad because i'm like all right you know you're working and stuff like that mom's working <clears throat> i'm like you know what did y'all want to be when you grew up you know or like you know that's the only way i could ask at the time and i know my mom was like you know she'd like to be a photographer and uh my dad i don't think he really gave me an answer he was just like you know he didn't say I'm your father and shut up, but that's that's my memory. That's my memory. Right? That's when I'm looking at it in the memory. That's what it says. But he, you know, basically was like, you know, to a degree, you know, I'm taking care of my family, nice stuff like that. Some mm. solid manly, you know, not <laughs> 1990s answer, like you know, a black father and a sitcom answer, you know, like. But it was, you know, it was living cool, color, man. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, man, that's interesting because. Uh, I mean, uh, 
Like, uh, you grew up just, it's just different, you know? We're both, we're all from the Syracuse region, but him and I yeah. both grew up in the suburbs, and I guess you grew oh, up in yeah. the city, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, yeah. that, what was that like? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, I don't know, I got some memories. Like, I mean, not some, of course. I got memories, but it's like. <laughs> I forgot the whole thing, dog. We gotta go to the next <laughs> question. I mean, you, any, you can hear screaming at night, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, sometimes it's just Please a cat. stop! Stop! Please! Right. Somebody help me! I gotta go to sleep. Could you keep down out there? Matter of fact, you, you cannot hear screaming <laughs> at night. No, no, you, <laughs> no, no bro. No, this no. is the deep homie guy. This is a deep homie. Bro, No, but say the truth. Sometimes it's just people having fun, I guess. Gotcha, gotcha. That's kind of too dark. But no. Um, no, I think what you're saying, when you meant screaming, maybe you meant more like just like hooting and hollering and whatever. whatever. I, Also just stuff. I went for a... I live in the cities. I live in a city right now. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Like there's uh, like one day... I woke up and I, all I could smell was somebody on the grill and I heard like Puerto Rican music and I was like, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> this, this is going to be a good day. I can mm-hmm. feel it. Hell like yeah. there's moments like that. But so it's a little crowded is what yeah. you're saying to me a little bit. But it's, it's, it's uh, like I stay in the house to be honest. Mm. Like, you know, just because that's, I think that's more of my personality and stuff like that. But I try to get out more and, you know, comedy definitely helps with that. But, uh, so I'm not, you know, I don't have all the stories, but it's, I don't know, it's cool. It's, it's, I don't really know how to explain it. I'll Would you describe yourself as an introvert? Yeah. No. Introvert, extrovert. Not really. I'm just an introvert, I guess. Hmm. But I love doing comedy, man. It is so interesting. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting to think of a performer. Comedy. It's interesting to think of a performer who goes out and is like on stage right. as an introvert. It's just an interesting I, psychology. I actually think it's not uh, abnormal at all. Like, I'd say I think it was it's, abnormal. Yeah, like I think it's highly common. Like it, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Oh, think man. of any co- think of any uh, comedy examples off the top of your head that you might describe as introverted. I'm trying. I'm honestly just trying to think. Um, like uh, I'm thinking of like Burr. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm thinking about Patrice. He was definitely extroverted, but maybe he was introverted. In his, I don't know. But he, I don't know. The stories of him down downtown New York, always always there at the mics, just making fun of people and everything everywhere. Okay. I'm pretty sure he was pretty extroverted because I don't go around making fun of people. Like, you know, there's some, sometimes you hear stories about comics who just are like, bah, like, you just, I guess probably like Louis C.K. is probably more introverted. And, okay. You know, you never hear too many stories about like Martin Lawrence either. I don't think like him going out and going crazy or anything. So, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I'm just, just speaking out loud here. No, no. I think it, it, it like, even, uh, even if we just think about like our local, like, comedy friends, I think like it's not, it, it doesn't seem like, uh, like RJ, he doesn't seem like he's like a major extrovert. Like, there's a lot of guys that don't strike me as like extroverted, super, super, super. Uh, I guess you're right about lo- locally or, or uh, outward. Yeah, I just think it's not necessarily like I think it's it's not uncommon to have like a guy who's typically pretty introverted and then, you know, uh, outspoken on stage. You know, they save it for the stage or whatever. You know, I don't know. I, it's, I, don't, I guess I, so. I don't know. I don't. Know. But uh, I don't mean to label RJ <laughs> or anybody else either. Wow, Paul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to RJ real quick. If you don't mind, if he's ever watching this, yeah, well, shout out to RJ McCarthy. Who man. do man? I haven't seen him in a while. Absolutely, COVID's yeah. pulled everybody apart, man. I think it's yeah. literally been over a year since I've seen him. That's about right, because it's May, and we have last dude. We had that one over like man. April. Remember? Oh shoot! Mike? Yeah, maybe, maybe so close to a year. Oh, we came yeah, so to. Uh, was, he came to uh, the mic at the, and Mike's. Like no, the mic at Mike's. Mm. Uh, remember when Ellinger had a mic? Uh, oh, bet. And then mm. the guy went online and was like, "We're gonna shut this down." And yeah, that was like around. Oh, yeah, when was that? June, July. That is a weird memory. Yeah. That was a quick. It was, it was, yeah, it was like wax on, months. wax off. It was like a little three months. But it was yeah. the, no, no, we had it before. Yeah, it was before we had it that. Before COVID. Before. I thought we just came back with it once, or twice. Yeah, we we had it for like, like I think a month before COVID, mm-hmm. and then it was short. It was like short before that, and then COVID, and then opened up, and then that was you know that's when the dude you know yeah all that. So speaking of mics, yeah, do you, but, do you prefer do you prefer like a like a mic to be like just what it often is, which is just like a a very small amount of people on mostly comics sitting there and it's like kind of just whatever. Or do you prefer it to be like a mic where there's like a decent amount of people in the crowd? I uh easy answer is I don't care. That like but like uh I'm i I'm so used to it just being comics. Yeah. That, I mean that doesn't like bother me or whatever. I'm like, all right, there's no pressure. Like I mean, yes, you wanna you want them to be like, you know, oh man, that was a good set or or, you know, laughing and stuff like that. But you're like, all right, these are just comedians. Like, but now, uh, 
not to contradict myself, you know, sometimes that's how you get on shows is you go to open mics and there's comedians who put on shows and then they like your set and stuff like that or they like, you know, you know, your performance and then, you know, they'll hit you up and stuff like that. So for that reason, you know, I'm like, you know, you always want to do your best, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But to answer your question, damn, I guess, uh, yeah. I don't mind there being some people there. Like, yeah, of course, yeah. I would like, I would, I would like people to be there, but I, I, damn, I in just, practice, I'm in the middle. You're saying in the practice it don't matter, but right. if you had your way every time, you might have some more people there so you could get a more honest uh, maybe, yeah, maybe barometer. Some, some people. Like, so when I did uh, Wise Guys, when I was doing Wise Guys. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about uh, that because that's like, you've been in the game for longer than us, and that was a part of the game, I believe, before either of us got into comedy, was the yeah. Wise Guys Club on Salina Street yeah. downtown. Yeah. That was like, what'd you say, like 09 to 013 or something, something like that? Well, it was, like it was that. somewhere before Salina. They 2010. Had another location 2010. before that, too. So that started uh, July 7, 2010. So it was, uh, that was that was fun. I mean, it was a learning, you know, learning experience. Like, I, I felt like I jumped out of uh, college and went into the pros, like, mm. as far as, like, comedy. Because I was doing it once a year at the high school. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, now this is full throttle. There's no excuses go you know go all in and stuff like that so they actually would have some people there you know like there would be like the bar when we first started mm-hmm. or i was first started there'd be people at the bar and then there would be people who were uh, all the comedians were like in the back and then there'd be like you know whoever you brought with you or something like that okay okay you know so then eventually that sounds uh, nice we ended up going downstairs and then we got a little bit more people in hmm. but it was dope though. So it was like I kind of had that point to kind of get used to, but that was earlier. And then you know, like I say, after maybe like year, th- I won't even say that. But like after year two, it, I got more used to started to you know get a little more used to it just being comedians. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Wow. Well, do you uh, do you think you're ever gonna? Hmm, it's totally possible to be a working comedian it's not impossible to be a working mm-hmm. comedian whether or not you're at the freaking whatever the, the ritz or something like that it's right, another right. matter right. but i mean it's totally possible for you to make it do you, are you trying to make it from syracuse like once you start to maybe start booking stuff you start going to pennsylvania driving to pennsylvania driving to ohio start i mean you've already been doing a little of this anyway but to try to right. put put cobble together like a tour or would you maybe go to the other route which a lot of comics would do which is to try to go straight to new york or la or whatever and try to make it there first and then branch out do you got a yeah, plan of attack here oh Right now, like, well, no, I haven't super planned it. I mean, of course, there's my thought of like moving to New York or, Atlanta, or LA, kind of, yeah, <clears throat> for like, sure. Either one of those, uh, and then just, just, I mean, not just like grinding it out, but grind, yeah, you grind it out. You hit the open mics, you get on whatever shows you can, you, you know, possibly if there's like acting auditions, maybe I'll try that or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I feel like that'll only help. Like, you know, if you, especially if you feel, like, confident with comedy and stuff like that and you're hitting the open mics and you see progression. <clears throat> but, like, say if you end up in a, like, a movie or something like that, even if you just, you know, like, somebody, uh, like, walking by or you, like, in a, a cam not a cameo, but, you know, right, you got, like, right. a small There's a lot part. more of those opportunities in New York, L.A., you know, Little Atlanta, Miami, Houston, that kind of stuff. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So, for if, sure. like, people see you in the movie, then, they gonna, you know, they'll see your face on the poster a little bit and maybe they'll connect it and then, you know, all right, let me go check this guy out or something like that and then that could build. And it feels so like it's, it's just, a lot harder to do that here in Syracuse in general. Right. Right? So that's right. what I'm asking you. It's like, what do you think? What are we going to do? I think, uh... Dang, I still haven't. It's a matter of when. Eventually, I gotta move. <laughs> really? Eventually, I gotta move. Because I'm stuck so right it's... now. Because I might move too. Because like he's moving to Atlanta and Zach's going to New York. And yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I'll stick around here or go one of those places to try to make my way. Like I don't know. But you're saying it's a matter of time. Huh? It's a ticking time. Yeah. Because this my my thing is that I, once again I'll be trying to be so sure. But you know, of course, sometimes you gotta take chances. But I just don't like. I, originally, it was gonna be when I hit thirty. Oh, was, you had a plan uh, to like, go? Yeah, okay. my plan was like, all right, I'm gonna move and I'm a, uh, I'm a freaking start. I'm a, you know, wherever I'm going, I'm that's where I'm gonna be and stuff like that. So, with COVID kind of slowing things down. Wow, well, uh, like, how old are you now? Twenty, my bad, not twenty. I am freaking yeah, I'm twenty nine. Why did I have to second guess that? I don't have <laughs> It really does. The uh, 
So you're trying to... So, well, you're not 30 yet. So this plan yeah. is not unfulfilled. It's still fulfillable. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't miss the deadline. You didn't miss it at all. It's just my, <laughs> you're on time, th- baby. My, my thought was like to like say like uh, June last year or whatever. Like my like before COVID, my thought was, all right, the whole 2020, because you know, I was like hosting Funny Bone. Uh, I wouldn't... I was one of... You know, host and funny ball. Yeah. Like, and yeah, 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 that's awesome. Stuff. For for so, touring acts and stuff. Looks right, right. pretty great, man. So it's really thought, awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, whole 2020, I'm going to just try to keep hosting as much as I can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, you know, you try to network and you just keep building that repetition. You know, you keep shooting your Instagram. And, I'll, you know, I'm going to do that whole year. And then that year, I'm going to try to do, like, as much as I can. I'm going to see if... I can get at, you know, maybe the Albany Funny Bone or, you know, Saratoga Funny Bone if they got one. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to branch out during that year. And then that'll give me some momentum, you know, when I my freaking go ahead and move. All right. Stuff uh, like that. Okay. But, so now the momentum thing didn't really happen like you wanted it to. Yeah. It didn't go as planned. But, you know, you have to adjust and stuff like that. So now I'm just like, uh, it's probably maybe next year. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't want that to sound like a, a thing, but, you know, next year, I think. That's the time I'm giving myself in my head, at least. Okay, you're kind of a steady kind of guy. You're like, I want to do what, this step, and then I want to do the next step. And you want to do this hosting step. Hopefully, it'll open back up at the Funny Bone, it sounds like. Yeah. Do more to- more shows up here and stuff I as well. I heard that the Albany Funny Bone is over. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I, I think I heard that, too. Yeah, Sweet. so I'm like, maybe, you know, build up some, you know, just... Keep like this whole month. Just I'm trying to hit open mics, and I'm like maybe next month or or July, gotcha. shoot my shot. It's almost like talking to a pretty chick. You just <laughs> hope it goes well. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. All right, man. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. Wow, this has been enjoyable. I'm not saying less. I'm just saying this has been enjoyable. Oh yeah, yeah, it's man. Good. Good. Cool. We try to have a good time, man. I hope we had fun today. I think we yeah. had fun. It's yeah, been a man. good time getting to know Mike Terry, man. Telling the world all about him. Absolutely. He's going to be a superstar someday. Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially with your focus, man. Because you're already funny. So, I mean, if you're just focused and you stay funny, I mean, what, how are you going to get unfunny? How are you going to just like some, you're going to fall down a set, set of stairs and all of a sudden yeah, knock your head. It's like Space Jam. You can't dunk anymore. Probably not. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's that's all these years they add up. Like on a, on a, a, a different like subject, like I, like, you know, I, like, yeah, I don't know. The thought of a co- comedian is a dude who's like miserable. That's often a thought. Like that. It's often or a thought. Like yeah. Depressed and all that. But like the thought is like, what if you get happy and then you're not funny no more? Oh. Because you don't have those problems. <laughs> yeah. And the problems are what made you funny. And right. stuff like that. Totally. And it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I'll be trying to balance. I'm like, you know, do I want to work on that? <laughs> like, you know. I don't need sure, to Sure, I got a personality me. flaw, but uh, it gave me <laughs> right. five minutes this past year. <laughs> right. I think it's a thing, man. I think it's a thing. Mm. I think that uh, Bill Burr is one of the funniest comics in my in my world. And I personally, he's amazing. He's a comic god still to me. But I don't think the last special or two were as hot and as funny as the older specials. Because I think he was angrier. He was not at that, at that time. He wasn't married. At that time, he whatever. He, right. he had all these problems, and he was always going on stage just yelling. And I think he's still great, but I just think that he lost a little of that edge. Yeah, he's genuinely yeah. not as bad of a person. Seems he's probably like he not as bad of a person. Almost enjoys his life. It's it's terrible to yeah. listen. It's to. horrible to see. <laughs> 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 um, that's a weird, that's a really profound point, man. Can yeah. you still be a clown if you're happy? When everything's going good, is there anything to make jest of? Yeah. Uh, Sure, I I'm sure some, there is. Yeah, I had some points where I was like enjoying. I mean, I'm not on that level, but I'm just saying enjoying life <laughs> and stuff like that. So like, you're saying you've been a long suffering comic, and all of a sudden you felt happy. The pangs of happiness recently. That's what you're telling pains me. Pangs of happiness. I like how you said that. <laughs> no, nah, but I've had you know days where I'm freak. Ah, that's too much. Oh, you went too deep. What's too deep? deep. It's too deep. Nothing's too deep on the show, bro. Like you know, I've had bad days, and then got on stage, and you know, uh. But I felt like, I don't know, I've had good, you know, good periods in my life and I was doing comedy and I felt like I still did well. Because I, I thought about that yeah, too. Yeah, it's possible. So I was like, I wonder if, I don't know. I don't know. Because at the end of the day, on your day to day, you want to be happy, you know? Everybody or, wants to, or, yeah, it's healthy to be happy. It's good to be at, happy. At least have some kind of joy. Like, you know. Yeah. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I was going anywhere with that point. Nah. He would like to be he happy. He would like to be happy. Are you not? You're not now, right? 
because you're still getting a comedy. <laughs> man. I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm I'm I try to I'm try I've embraced the thought of trying to be positive. I would say mm, like every yeah. day is not a is not a good day. Well, because like but, okay, I think I think comedy is uh, sometimes it is based in a, a bunch of negative stuff. Right, but right. you're making light of the negative stuff. You're making it. You're making it positive. You're transforming. I, theoretically, I think you're transforming tragedy into something else. Like you're taking mm-hmm. things. You're like, because like think about the our premises. It's like homeless people. It's like, right. it's like, uh, it's like how sad and ridiculous certain advertising campaigns are. Mm-hmm. It's like how nobody can say the, my name. Like it's stuff like that, and you make right, it right. fucking like hilarious. You take yeah. it and transform it, something a turd well, into gold. Well, that is it's really I think it's a, lot of a phrase that I heard growing up in the theater the during theater. high school years. <laughs> you guys didn't have enough guts to do that, right, but right, I did. The prim and, and proper. They Paul said Wood. that comedy. Is tragedy plus distance right or time? Plus distance. Well, like distance is time, or distance would be right. Oh, okay. Like it could be, I slip on a banana peel, uh, destroy my face. It's not funny when it's you. It's funny not when he funny does for it. Me, you seeing it from across the street, pretty oh, okay. freaking funny, right? Like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Distance, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think comedy's awesome because. It sucks to be unhappy, and I guess it's fun to just make fun of the unhappiness and, the, and it makes fun of the things that make us feel a certain type of way. I don't know. It's good. It's just right. healthy. It's just better. And instead of just complaining about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's therapy, man. Yeah. How many is therapy? Like it's one time I, uh, I was sick, right? I think I just had like a cold maybe, but I was feeling sick and went on stage. It ended up going well. And then when I got off stage and I was like, Oh, I'm good. Yeah. I don't feel sick no more. Oh uh, yeah. I was like, this healing? Is this like healing power <laughs> and mm-hmm. comedy? Yeah. But I was like, no, oh, it was just, it's freaking weird, man. That adrenaline but it's rush. therapy. Yeah. I, I, yeah, so like uh, what we were saying about all this negativity, though, I remember I was going to bring up Dan McCourt. Rest in peace, oh, okay. Dan McCourt. Rest yeah. in peace. He late, great. To, late great. Late uh, great Syracuse oh. comic. And he, uh, he used to talk about like how it was helpful for some reason to get angry before you go on stage if you had nerves. If you were nervous, oh, okay. yeah. he, he would kind of talk about get yourself angry and you can't feel those. So oh, okay. it's, it's an interesting, it's a different approach. I don't know. It yeah. almost it, like like to to make Michael Jordan references here. Uh, like Jordan would make up like fake slights to act pissed off at other people. Yeah, he yeah. would be like, if you can just convince yourself that you're really like Dan McCord would say, like if you you can just convince yourself that you're really angry at the entire audience, like that will take like that will help take away nerves. Um, how do you guys balance nerves and stuff? That's pretty cool though. Like, uh, like you've, I've seen like pictures you you hang, hang with Dan. Oh yeah, like so you you've been able to you know probably pick his brain. Like, there was us on a show up there, remember yeah. the old Sarge yeah. show from a couple years ago. Oh yeah, there yeah. we are up there with with uh, with Paul Ellinger, Dan McCourt, freaking. Yeah. Oh no, P wasn't on that particular show, but he oh, was okay. on a, another show. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot I, the other show. Shows, Can I just yeah. paste you in over the chick that didn't show up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No I'm names, cool, no names. <laughs> um, I uh, yeah yeah I I definitely uh, look at him as like my first year like kind of like my comedy mentor in some ways that's what's up man yeah for sure he was cool i, I think he was like that to a lot of people i guess yeah he was yeah. a really nice guy as, as, as good of a comic as he was how many years of experience he was really nice to us uh yeah rookies right right yeah, yeah he was cool man yeah. did you have any experiences with the dude yeah or whatever yeah. he's uh i think when i i don't know how long i think he's been doing it i know it's over more than 10 years I think it was like 15 or 16. Yeah, years. yeah. He was around I 18 or 19 years. 18 or 19. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm way off. He was deep. But no, you're close. He was deep in the game. Yeah. I remember, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of, lot of I, lo- I love seeing him perform, man. You know, no matter, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, like sometimes, yeah. you know, of course, you know, I'm like, damn, that's, I wouldn't touch that topic. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it he was. He had like a suit of armor on. Yeah. Towards I, all that stuff. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the freaking. The, the one suit of armor called uh, pharmaceutical medications. Yeah. And it was also <laughs> called. Yeah. No, he was drugged up, but he yeah. didn't give a fuck, dude. He didn't give a yeah. fuck. And not that was like, a great. Tra- that's a great trait for a comic to not. Well, you should care, but you shouldn't care like to where it bothers you, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. It's just a little bit of like balance and all that, I guess. But like. Uh, no, yeah, I like I like how he would just say something, and uh, damn, I don't want to do his jokes, but it's just he oh, has he has so passed away, so it's kind of hard to plagiarize him now. <laughs> 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 so no, you could probably do one, honestly. He had he had one. Uh, he said, "Hold on, hold on, you got it, you got it." I tried to uh, damn, I don't want to fuck it up. 
It was about Amy Winehouse. Oh, yeah. And he was like, uh, Rehab or something? I tried to. <laughs> what do you listen to? Or no, like, oh, all right. So I something. tried to charge. I tried to charge my phone while listening to Amy Winehouse and my phone. No, no, no. It's not it. But it is, I tried to do something with Amy Winehouse and my phone died. And it was just <laughs> freaking what? hilarious. I can't do it verbatim, of course, right? Because it's not that's my joke, right, but right. it's just, yeah. it was freaking hilarious every time. I mean, I'm not taking a shot at Amy Winehouse. Uh, rest in peace as well. Saying, also, right, rest in peace. Right, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. But that joke was funny. Dang, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he went pretty extreme. Like, 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 it was like Bill Cosby and Amy Winehouse, or every subject he oh. could. You could you could go for. And that's another part about comedy too is the good like, just pulling things together that don't usually belong together. You know, juxtaposition. Right. So you yank Amy Winehouse with your phone blowing up or something oh, like whatever. Yeah. That's funny. But he he always impressed me because sometimes I would do those mics. You probably done some of those mics that uh, like aren't exactly comedy mics in Syracuse. Right, right. So for example, they'd have the mix mics, basically just mostly music mics. And sometimes you know people might go to the Funk and Waffles or maybe you might go to the Beer Belly. Mm. So there's this one mic, the beer belly, and this is like last year, really, or the year before, or maybe it was even last year. And I remember like I that particular day, I, I think it was you, me, Jack Flug, or something like that. You know, that might have been a couple of comics. And just like after the musicians went up, the comics started going up, and most of the comics just either bombed or just like I, it was just like you know the the crowd was just like not really with it, and then just right. got, went back to talking. So there's like a bunch of talking as the comics were performing, oh, and uh, all of a sudden, dude, a freaking veteran Dan McCord goes up there, dude. And he, I don't even know what it was. All he did was a series of one-liners. That's a whole, all, you know, sometimes yeah, you just yeah. pull out the bag of too many one like so many one-liners. Too many one-liners. Endless sometimes. bag of one-liners. <laughs> yes. But, bro, he had them in stitches for 10 straight minutes yeah. in a mic wow. where no other comic could control. That's what's up. You know what I mean? So that shows, like, that was, like, something that I saw that I was, like, impressed by. You were at his, uh, the taping of the special on SU Campus, or no? I, I was there with you. Yeah, you and were there. And P. Ellinger. Okay. Did you go to that, too, or no? I I did not. I know he invited me and did stuff he? like that. But yeah, I, I, <laughs> like now, I don't want to sound corny, but I'm like, I kind of wish I would have uh, gone just because, like, I know gone too I've, soon. Done show, I've done shows with him. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, done open mics with him. But, like, um, uh, like somebody said one time, like, uh, or it might have been him. He was talking about, like, doing his A jokes and stuff like that. And, you know, just being at his best. And I'm like, uh, I would I would love to not, I would love to see it. Mm-hmm. I would love to see it. Like I, uh, I wouldn't say like it felt like it was pulling punches at open mics, but I'm like those are open mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. So sometimes sure. you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna perform at a show the same way I perform yeah. at open mic and stuff like that. Well, so, oddly enough, on that exact subject, the dude did leave behind. There's a couple specials for some reason, somehow, on YouTube. Dan McCord. Okay. You can look them up. I think one of them, I might be wrong about this, but I think one of them literally has like 80,000 views. Like one of them got oh, like play. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Exposure. I think maybe it was filmed on Ithaca or Binghamton or something like that. But he had yeah, a couple, he's got he had two couple albums specials. on Apple Music, too. He's got uh, Audible you can see him on YouTube, but yeah. and... Yeah. Yeah. I am blanking. It might be play. Audible Talks College. That you, you might be that one that you can watch on YouTube. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's cool that he's he's been preserved. <laughs> he yeah, also man. did you get his book? He wrote a crazy yeah. freaking book about the art and the theory of stand up comedy. I started reading it. I haven't made my way through the, all of it, but there's a lot of good parts. Like mm-hmm. honestly, it's like an That's underground right. book. It's not even really published. Yeah. He was, yeah. Saying, he was talking about that. I remember. Did you ever get a copy? Not yet. No. We'll, we'll send, send you a PDF if you want. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be educational, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Well, good dude. Man. Good memories. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, gone too soon, brother. Too gone. Yeah. So gone too soon. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, thank you for coming on the pod today, man. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you had a good time. Pleasure, man. <laughs> pleasure. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. So yeah. the audience, like you said, they can find you uh, on Instagram, Mike Terry Seven, right? Yep, Mike Terry Seven. Uh, yeah. Facebook, Mike Terry. Uh, I got a Snapchat, but I don't use it. So I mean, Mike Terry Seven, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> But, you know, it is what it is. That's man. about it. As All far right. as places you can catch me outside. Oh, when's your next show is coming up? You got? Oh, I know yeah. you're, on the, you're on the bill with us on the 12th in Fulton, New York. Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, be a good person and pull up my... Uh, you got you got a gig Friday? Yeah, professional and pull up my... Uh, yeah, I got... Uh, where are you? Pardon me. Oh, you go right ahead. Sorry, man. It smells a little bit, but I'll pardon you this time. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding.
<laughs> All right, so got a show uh, June fourth at Homebrewed Comedy. Oh yeah, at Homebrewed Comedy at Buried Acorn. Yeah, uh, Saturday, yeah. New York. you've done that many a few times with Big Peters. Yeah, why what am I calling him Big Peters all of a sudden? That's just, he like a super bill. Yeah, yeah, no, but, that's so uh, horrible. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. that. I didn't it's say allowed, that. right? Yeah. Oh, you heard it first from. Paul. Yeah, well. <laughs> But, but let's just mark the time. I'm never, getting, I'm never getting out of Mike Peter's show now. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but uh, his pod's gone big time, man. I think it's going oh, uh, in, in national, man. He's hey, never. He told me. Uh, yeah, he's doing big things. He's got like a schedule. Like I think yeah. he said he got availability in September. I'm like, wow, wow that's yeah. having it like that scheduled out. I'm like, that's that's like professional level. Right Absolutely, there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty dope, man. But yeah, he, uh, we got the show June 12th. You know, out in uh, Fulton at the Community Arts Theater. That's going to be fun. Then uh, just book one for June 27th. It's going to be at the Kabuki Resur- Restaurant out in uh, Pennsylvania. Techville. Is that like you and Jackson, right? Yeah. 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 And then it's going to be a chef performing. That'd be, that'd be dope. All right. Check out Mike Terry. Look for him on these shows coming up. Summer 2021. Shot girl summer. Hot girl summer. Hot whatever. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot one. One way or another. All right, you heard it here first. The Mike Terry episode of the Deep Homie Guide to the 21st Century. Man, we learned so many things we didn't know today. Didn't realize we were going to travel into taboo territory, but we did. (laughs) It's me, Karim Anthony. We got P. Daddy Woods. And remember. Remember, keep it deep, homies.